I thought a good place for us to start this semester is by overviewing fairy tales. Since a good number of the stories that we're going to encounter uh, at this early part of the semester will be within something we call a frame narrative, these short fairy tales will give us some insight into uh, maybe a better understanding of how those things are working. So I absolutely love this image uh, from, it's, it's very Chagall-like um, with the colors, but trying to encapsulate a lot of the common uh, myths in the forms of fairy tales that we we are familiar with. And many of us, even if we never had people like reading aloud to us when we were little, um, we encounter these fairy tales either through Walt Disney, through film, through short works uh, of videos, um, or simply through just friends retelling stories. Um, so they're very, very popular. They've been popular for, uh, for really for centuries. So what we'll do is we'll, we'll take a look first at this Joanne Schiller quote, deeper meanings reside in the fairy tales told me in my childhood than in any truth that is taught in life. And I think fairy tales in some ways get kind of like uh, short shrift. People push them aside as just kind of these fantastical elements to keep your child amused. Um, but there may be more to it and, and, uh, cultures often have a deeper purpose in mind when these fairy tales are framed and then spread um, first orally through the story. So what we're going to do in this quick little uh, lecture is I'll go through some basic points, some things to remember about fairy tales as we work our way through, and then we'll start our work with uh, our first three familiar fairy tales, Cinderella, Snow White, and the story of Hansel and Gretel. So let's start with a, an idea about structure in a fairy tale. Um, most fairy tales will contain three primary or principal elements. Uh, these three are generally found um, in the form of a young hero or young heroine, but not necessarily. And sometimes we get even a story as in like a, almost like a beast fable or beast fairy tale where our main character is an animal of some sort. But the three principal elements are alienation, uh, and this is where the central character, whether it's a girl or a boy or some kind of animal form, um, often finds themselves different than other people within their community. And that community might include the kingdom that they live in. It might include the village. It might include, in some cases, even like the little church community they're in. But it might also include the family. And that's an important one to kind of uh, keep in mind. And uh, in some rare fairy tales, you'll also see where the hero, the heroine, is a part of the natural system, but they find themselves alienated from that natural system. The second principle is isolation. So alienation, they are pointed out as being somewhat different than those around them. And this leads to isolation from the community, whether it's the family, the church, the village, uh, or nature itself. That alienation will sometimes be self-imposed, like the uh, character might decide on their own that they need to leave. That's the only course that they have. It might be uh, an exile of something sort like that. Um, they soon find themselves often on some kind of journey. Uh, sometimes it's a quest, but sometimes it's simply a journey and they wind, wind up wandering in some kind of wild, mysterious, dark or forbidding setting. Um, so it's not uncommon for a lot of these fairy tales to move from a city or village setting or a king, uh, like a court, uh, a castle, into the wilderness. So the, the, the character moves into a dark wood. In the dark wood, uh, they soon find themselves lost. Um, and as they travel through that, they have their adventure, they gain their skills, they gain their hardships. Um, they come out of it different than when they went into it. Uh, and, and that leads to the third and final element of the, the fairy tale, and that's reconciliation. So following that period of high danger, the character often finds a way to return back home and get back to that original home. And at this point, they reconcile themselves with their family. Sometimes they are not recognized because of the change that's happened. But um, they find that reconciliation with family, with uh, kingdom, with village, and their own personal healing has a way of healing the rest of the kingdom. Now, it's also important to remember that fairy tales began as an oral form. And so when you find like the Brothers Grimm uh, collecting these tales and these fables, their primary goal were they were sociologists, anthropologists that were seeking answers uh, and trying to write down stories that were being lost. Um, 
in those oral tellings. So even our modern like urban legends that you see sometimes pop up in YouTube uh, or on Reddit, these are built to be word of mouth rather than written word that's in some uh, large volume that can be kind of passed on and found in your library. Um, because they're oral tellings, they you can have the same story repeated in multiple cultures with minor changes to the character, minor changes to the setting, uh, but really not minor uh, changes to the three elements that we talked about before. So why do creatures creatures. Why do cultures uh, feel the need to create fairy tales in the first place? Well, I think in short, uh, it's to help ensure that the children, the offspring of this culture, are going to grow up to be stable, functioning, healthy individuals. And so I know it's a little bit of a stretch, but um, mindfulness of the problems that each of individual encounters uh, with frustrations, with identity, with um, morality, with problems of disappointment, those are not new to human beings. Even though we have fancy psychological terms to describe them, um, they're, they're elements that were certainly apparent in, in most cultures. And I think one mechanism that the culture develops to have uh, this handled is they create stories as a way of children to latch on to because they're 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 an easy way you can't rationalize sometimes with a six-year-old okay but what you can is you can tell them a story and that story can involve a character that they find a, a relationship with an engagement with and through that character's life they can live vicariously and they can see how the own issues that they face are being worked out by this character uh, in their situation, their predicament. So they're able to fit their subconscious problems, their subconscious needs into this highly conscious story. And sometimes it might even give them a vocabulary or at least a roadmap of how to escape that, like what tools they might need to cultivate themselves, things like courage, uh, some of those virtues we talked about um, in that exercise we worked early with the semester. So I'm gonna, this note has been up here. You're welcome to look at it. It's a little more psychological uh, to understand it, but I think the message is the same. Cultures understand the need to educate their children, not in terms of morality, but in terms of giving them tools so that they can be healthy. Uh, and that health includes physical health, but also mental health as well. And finally, let's look at two, uh, two other components of the fairy tale. And again, these notes, this information is meant to help you as you start to think about the fairy tales. We want to move beyond just thinking of them as good stories. Um, our job as college students is to try to find some kind of uh, way to understand what their purpose is, how we may have gotten uh, things out of it that we didn't realize we were getting, uh, but then how we can also perpetuate this into uh, our own future dealings with people. So let's look at the concept of good and evil. Um, central to many tales is this battle between good and evil. That evil may take all kinds of forms. Sometimes it's a supernatural form, sometimes it's another individual, sometimes it's a way the child might have of dealing with a stress that's at home. For example, stepmothers, evil stepmothers or wicked witches uh, are symbolic. Often they're female. They take the negative form of a conflict the child is having with a mother figure. And that is worked out by vilifying that mother figure and then finding a way to battle through um, the discrepancy, the, the, the conflict that you have there. Okay, So sometimes it's not always good versus evil. Sometimes it's a, a battle between what's evil and what's even more evil. Um, and often what we find, as we see like in the Cinderella tale and the Snow White tale, um, the punishment for, for being evil is often humiliation on the person who's invoking that. And so we'll see things like the, the stepsisters uh, wind up with their feet cut off. Um, they're humiliated before the rest of the community. Uh, it's a remnant of what we used to call shame culture that was very prevalent in the old days, and it goes all the way back to the Puritans, uh, you know, putting people into stocks in the public square. The idea that shame was a way to corral or control human behavior or misbehavior. On a critical level, 
much responsibility is leveled at fairy tales for helping to establish some kinds of codes of conduct, but also establishing some fair, uh, some fair, fairly unpolitically correct stereotypes, especially for females. So we can't let that go. And, and perhaps Disney has been guilty of this, uh, at least old Disney, in more ways than one, this stereotyping of the female form and what her duties, obligations, and roles should be, and uh, how she needs to be rescued by the, the masculine hero. Um, certainly we have Disney moving away from that. But fairy tales were products of the cultures that gave rise to them. So what are some central themes that we often find in fairy tales? Um, some of them include appearance versus reality, uh, which can be confusing for the student or the child. Um, there's often a readiness to help, to die or fight for your family or for your friends. So we'll see this revisited again when we get to like Lord of the Rings and you think about that as a, uh, a mythos or some kind of uh, updated medieval fairy tale. Dangers are all around us. They're ever-present. Sometimes those dangers come from within the family. Sometimes they come from outside forces. Uh, but one of the most important elements or themes within a fairy tale is that no problem can go without a solution. Everything is possible in a fairy tale, which is why we often see the use of fantastic elements. The distance between what's acceptable and normal and what's distant and fantastical allows us to discuss some of those problem issues, those sensitive issues we might find. So other essential themes we find, the strong and the weak can overcome the powerful. So it's not always about like might makes right. Sometimes the littlest uh, hobbit can find a way to conquer. Um, justice always finds a way of prevailing and compassion with humility are rewarded. So some of those good virtues we talked about building are also present in the fairy tales that we look at. So that's a quick overview and look at the fairy tales. We're going to move forward with our, our first three fairy tales, Cinderella, Snow White, and Hansel and Gretel. Good luck. Oh, there's one other important uh, element to these stories that I wanted to include, and that's how the, <clears throat> the stories kind of have a voice to two basic human needs that all of us share, and those needs are being addressed within fairy tales uh, in large part. And those two needs are the need for attachment and the need for authenticity. And so real quickly, the need for attachment is the idea that um, we need, particularly at a young age, to form an emotional bond, and that bond, whether it's with a, a, a parent figure or some other authority figure, or whether it's, it's with something like a... a uh, another force, maybe a natural force, uh, that bond provides a steady sense of safety and security for us. And so when that bond is not formed or when it's malformed, it can lead to issues as we see kind of worked out through th some of the problems that our characters might see. The other human need that often comes into conflict with the need for attachment is the need for authenticity. This is the need to know your own identity. We talked about this when we did um, Maslow's hierarchy, that, that idea of self-actualization, the need to know who you are and to be able to express that identity without kind of fear of rejection from those close to you or those within your culture. And so when those two needs begin to get into conflict with one another, that's where we see conflict happening within the fairy tale in form of the, uh, the character in conflict with a parent, the character in conflict with a step-parent, the character in conflict with nature. Um, it's that struggle between your own identity uh, formation and that need for attachment and security. And those two things often work against each other, uh, but they're two very, very basic needs that we all share and feel. Um, and you might think about it in terms of your own life and how those things are worked out or not worked out and how they can lead to certain issues for us.